Uh, hello, I'm Simona Constantin. I'm part of the Romanian division of the Beast Film Festival. Uh, I'm now in Bucharest, Romania. And uh, today we're having a talk with the directors of the films included in the, in the school visit program of the festival. And uh, together with uh, Daniel, the representative of the, of the film school in Cluj. Um, hello, and it's nice to finally get to see you because until now we, we only talk, now we see each other and maybe we're even gonna see each other in real life next. <laughs> I was super excited to watch your films. They were super, super diverse. We have animations, we have fiction films, documentaries, experimental films. And uh, yeah, I just cannot wait to, to hear from you. How did you work on all these projects? And I'm gonna start with you, Daniel, because you are responsible for this election. Uh, please tell us a bit about you, about the school, and about the, the kinds of films that you are being are making there, are producing there. Um, hi, all. Thank you for the invitation. We are really honored to uh, have this invitation for you uh, because we are um, a young film school in uh, in Romania, so we are based in Cluj. Um, and we are part of the Babesboy University, uh, which is the largest university in Romania. And um, um, our history dates back from 2005. Uh, so yeah, we're uh, quite young in this uh, in this area. And um, now we have uh, uh, programs also for bachelor and for master students. And uh, maybe this is why you, you've seen this uh, diversity of product because um, also we're, we're giving much freedom to, to our students to work on uh, the films they love and uh, the formats they, uh, they enjoy, uh, enjoy the most. Um, as a side thing, uh, it's very interesting that we have so many animation, although we do not have a special program in animation. But in the past years, many students uh, uh, tried this, uh, tried to work in animation, and uh, uh, some of them, uh, we have um, Esther here, um, are really, I think I, they're. Uh, working with our help but um, uh, also on, on their own in this uh, in these projects uh, because they they learn some um, uh, much on their own in uh, in this animation field maybe in the future we'll have also a program in animation um, so um, we are now having in the bachelor programs in film directing in film editing in cinematography uh, and uh, in the master's programs, we have uh, documentary filmmaking. Uh, Sandra uh, is a graduate from the documentary filmmaking program. Um, in short film, it's, this is a program in Hungarian because we teach in Romanian, Hungarian, and English. Um, and um, uh, Ervin and Hunor uh, graduated from, uh, from this, uh, this program. And uh, also, um, we recently started a program in digital interactive arts, uh, which is more on the performing uh, arts uh, aided by digital technologies. So, yeah, I think uh, in these years we succeeded in uh, uh, opening many programs and um, offering a diversity of formats and uh, for our students, yes, for our uh, students. Cool, super, super nice. I'm gonna also ask you when we get to, to you, the, the directors, how was it to be part of all of these yeah, programs? And I was wondering, Daniel, how, what are the joys and the challenges of working in a film school in Romania? What are the good parts and what are the bad parts? I don't know. <laughs> There is a good part uh, um, uh, that comes from uh, uh, the fact that uh, uh, filmmaking is considered one of the key points in uh, um, art education in, uh, in Romania. So maybe you know we have special financing for uh, the filmmaking programs. Um, which uh, helps us in a way because um, um, 
it's quite expensive to have a film school uh, due to the necessity of uh, equ equipment, laboratories and uh, stuff like this. And um, yes, this is a good thing. Um, I don't know if it's a bad, uh, I, don't, I don't really see the bad thing. Maybe the bad thing is... Um, or the challenges, I don't know. Challenges, uh, the, I guess the major challenge is um, uh, how are uh, uh, students um, um, enter the industry afterwards? Because um, as we know, we're not... Uh, we do not have a major in the film industry in uh, in Romania, so um, everybody knows now that uh, um, uh, the producers and the filmmakers are struggling with financing their uh, their films, and um, it's a quite competitive field. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess this is the the major challenge. For uh, for film schools and I think for all art schools in uh, in Romania, um, the fact that uh, and also for for uh, for Cluj because uh, Cluj is not a major uh, point in uh, the film industry now. There are plans to uh, grow the interest for. Um, different uh, producing companies to come to Cluj, but uh, as you know, uh, most of them are based in Bucharest. So uh, we see many times that our students, uh, after they finish their, uh, their school, uh, cho uh, choose to, to go to Bucharest to work. So this is, I think this is a local challenge for, for our school. Yeah, but I think collaborations like this one with the Beast uh, Film Festival are really helpful because you get the films to be seen elsewhere. Uh, are there other collaborations or partnerships that the school has or how can you help students to be yeah, better actors in the industry afterwards? Uh, so we, uh, there are some collaboration with local uh, producing companies um, where they uh, get to have their internships, um, and um, also there are, we uh, started a collaboration with um, uh, two major film directors in uh, Romania. Uh, we work with uh, Radu Jude and Adrian Zitaru, who uh, teach in our uh, film direct and uh, film directing uh, uh, groups, and um, uh, they uh, invite uh, their students to work uh, with them on their projects. Uh, to our students were also um, the assistant directors for uh, the Barbarians for the uh, for Adu Rude's film. Um, and um, every time we have an opportunity for them to go to festivals, um, uh, the school supports their projects. Um, so yeah, you know, we're scouting for for these opportunities. Um, every time we, because um, each of them uh, have already been in uh, film competitions, in film festivals, so uh, we are trying to support this as much as we as we can. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to open this next question to all of you. How was it to to be studying at the Babes Bolya University? What what did you learn there? What did you like there? What was it about the school that really made a difference in your career? I don't know. So, well, um, so stu studying at the school was uh, was quite in interesting because um, we learned not only the, the the theory but only the practice. But the practice was more when we got to work on our uh, bachelor film and uh, and our ma master films, and um, the the theory. Um, which the school pro provided for us uh, was pretty pretty much help uh, mm -hmm. helpful uh, from the storytelling uh, and writing a script to how to cut and edit a film. Cool, thank you. 
Uh, is there anyone else who wants to add something to this? Yes, me. For me, uh, it was about the people and the teachers because I think I found some uh, pretty interesting teachers that really helped me to to discover my my creativity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I, I also studied film school, and I think it's super important that you have a a circle of people, teachers, and other students that basically help you to find your own voice that yeah. you're interested in, the style that you're interested in. And it's, it's great when you can do that from university on and you aren't left afterwards to make a decision or something like that. Yeah. I, and I think that part of it is to be able to try everything that you want during the university and to be comfortable with that, I guess. Are there any um, silly mistakes slash bloopers that you made in your films that you will always remember, like first time filmmaking mistakes? <laughs> that you encountered during university years? Like some moment that you would go back now and would do things completely different? Uh, I, I would add that um, we were fil filming with the whole group uh, a documentary about che Cefere. And uh, we were um, kind of separated into small groups. We just got on a train and uh, every small group just got down from the train in, in, on every step station on every um, station that came next and um, me and my group got down from from the train on, on on a location full of dogs and we were so scared of them um, we just could not film what what we wanted because we ju were just running from from the dogs to not get by so <laughs> that was pretty interesting yeah, so next time you have uh, to, you need some guards <laughs> or something. <laughs> and now uh, during the pandemic times, uh, I know that you don't go to, to the university anymore, right? And how do you keep contact with it for the ones that are still studying? Because I know that some of you have graduated. Actually, that's why I started to make an animation for my bachelor degree project because I had to stay at home, especially because I just came back from Italy and I was in a two week, uh, very private quarantine with the policeman and everything that you can imagine. And uh, yeah, so I started to learn animation and uh, that's how we are um, struggling with the quarantine times. And now we are having smaller projects and uh, we, we are trying to, find a way to go outside and film but um, it's not really happening so we are we are trying to choose inside uh, filming spots mm -hmm. but now let's let's go to your film if you mentioned it already so uh, esther zita i hope i'm pronouncing it right uh, yeah yeah, yeah right? Zita, but almost yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, your film is called Mascara, and um, you, as you said, it's an animation film. How did you learn to about animation? Yeah, I, w I was in an art school, but we also had uh, workshops on uh, university about animation, and uh, we had class about animation, and while we were learning editing, we also learned some animation. So I just kind of had to combine my previous knowledge with the uh, things I learned in university and yeah I had to make storyboards first and it wasn't really a complicated uh, scenario so I, I already had the uh, storyboard and the uh, whole script for a film and that I um, and that was the thing I implemented in animation so did you work on it by yourself or did you have yes 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 Okay. Mostly, like I had to hire voice actors, but uh, and the uh, music was made by one of our teacher. So, yeah, mostly I did the whole thing. And how long did it take you to make the whole thing, the whole film? Oh my God, like three months or more. I, I would never start again a project like this by myself again. So I, I won't do it alone again, but um, it was an interesting project. What were your previous films? I mean, what did you do before doing animation? 
Mm, before, like uh, documentary films, mostly, and portraits and uh, commercials. But uh, this was the first uh, fictional film I made. Mm -hmm. And do you do you plan to continue with animation, or I don't know, well, what are your plans for now? Mm, yes, actually, animation. But I'm interested also in uh, filmmaking like uh, shorts and documentary shorts maybe so yes and no and no and yes but i, I won't do it alone again uh -huh. yeah yeah i i think you work 24 7 on this one <laughs> yeah like i skipped sleeping because i really like to draw and i like the scenes and how it turned out so i, I was really passionate about this project but uh, it, it was not healthy for me and for my family was very mad all the time because I was falling asleep by, by the dinner table. So it was a... <laughs> where was the film screened until now or where was it shown? Um, it was screened at the Film Tet Festival and uh, I think that's all because the pandemic started and... Uh, oh, no, and another... Uh, 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 the Cluj uh, something days, Cluj, um, Cluj and Hungarian days or something like that. Uh, yes, and uh, like this school screenings that were held because pandemic. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, we're gonna go back to, to this, to the distribution and how do your films get to be watched by people in these conditions. But now I'm gonna pass to Erwin Sabo and because you, you were the first one who talked. So yeah, I'm gonna go to you. All right. uh, <laughs> and uh, your film called Obscure, it is based on an autobiographical story, right? Uh, yeah, more or less. It, it, it's actually I mean, based on, uh, on a story my dad told me. Mm -hmm. And I just adapted the screenplay uh, after the short story my dad was talking about. Mm -hmm. And when did you first hear the story and how did you get to make a film about it in the end? Um, the first time I heard the story was in the first year of, of, of university when uh, we were going with the whole family by car to Cluj. And um, of, on the road, there was a hill with, uh, with a fog. And... Um, my dad told told me a story that he once heard from someone that uh, that fog is making people crazy on that hill, and um, but that's just a myth. Just that was just a um, um, local legend to say so, and um, it just got it just it just got me excited, and um, three or four years after, I wrote a screenplay for the film genre course. And uh, I just got to make the film after the screenplay, after, after I wrote the screenplay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, you have, a, I don't know how to ask it, but uh, how did you develop the visual approach and the structure of the film? I mean, what, was it like this from the beginning or did it change along the way? Uh, yeah, the film is pretty much, um, the film pretty much looks like uh, how I imagined it. Mm -hmm. um, because I um, had um, pretty serious location scouting. Actually, one of the most nervous things about this project of mine was the location scout. Because I, I had one of the e exteriors and then the interior, which is a photo, labor, a photo laboratory. An, um, an obscure room. Uh, that that was damn hard to find because um, we 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 needed all, the, all all the props. We we needed the red light. We uh, we needed um, a room bi big enough to fit the lights in and the camera in. And um, that was pretty pre uh, pretty much um, hard to find. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And did you find it yourself? I mean, how, how big was the production team of the film? The, the, the production team um, was not that big. I think um, 10 people or so. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had one music composer. Um, I was with the camera and I was the director also. I was the, the, the screenwriter. Um, 
I I had one one guy which worked on on the visual effects, one guy which worked on on the graphics, one guy who um, who just mixed the the sound of the whole thing, and um, and other other helpful guys, but not really who were not really into the the production, but helped with props and uh, other stuff. Yeah. And how was it to film your own film? Do you do it in general, or was it only a one-off for this one? Uh, it it was. I tried to um, not film my films. I tried only to direct them. Mm -hmm. uh, but because it it was a it was the master's de degree, um, I I wanted to do it um, the way I imagined it. And I I spoke to I think to two cam camera guys, but they just were not compatible with my vision so i d i decided to film it mm -hmm. okay uh i wanted to go on to agata to agata Olteanu with the film to grow under a wild cherry tree because your film is quite personal and i wanted to ask how did you develop it in these difficult conditions yeah staying at home all of us staying at home <laughs> yeah so i was locked up at home with my mom and my sister and that usually doesn't happen very uh, much because I'm from Bucharest and as I came to Kush for university, I only go back um, home for, you know, Christmas or Easter or so and I stay like for a couple of days. And so with the lockdown, it was really a time to, you know, just enjoy being with them and spending time, yeah, in the room where I grew up. Um, so when I first started filming, um, yeah, the film was actually uh, the homework for my second semester for second year. Uh, and I, my camera was back in Cluj because I didn't know I would be home for that long. And I said, okay, let's do something. I started filming with my phone. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I had to improvise and be creative, I guess. It was just, uh, it was like, playing and like rediscovering film again because I think as students we stress so much about the equipment and really we need to be very high tech and film 8k 4k uh, 100k <laughs> but yeah with this film I learned that yeah you can you can do pretty much anything creative with what you have and yeah, you just need the idea and you, I think you need to be honest and yeah, really be, be playful and try to figure out what you what you want to say. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And how was it with the editing? I mean, did it take you a lot of time to puzzle everything together or did uh, it you, natural flow? No, not that natural because it wasn't uh, like pre-thought. I, I didn't have like a screenplay or something like that. I just filmed, I just uh, recorded like the sound. My mom used to talk on the phone with her friends or so. And I used to like turn the microphone on and just put the phone there. <laughs> so then I had like all this material and I had to cut it and see what fits with what. Yeah, I had some pre-thought scenes like with the, you know, with the cherry tree, with the cherries on the wall or so, but yeah. Yeah, it was quite hard on editing, but it was also fun because, again, I had to work with what I had and, yeah, it got really, yeah, it was fun. It was just fun to do. Mm -hmm. did, did your family see the film? Yeah. <laughs> At first, I thought that they were going to be upset because, you know, I filmed them and sometimes they were fighting and so, but I tried to, you know, edit it uh, just so they would see like the, the fun part is like what I was seeing because yeah, it was my perspective of yeah me living with them and I didn't try to uh, put them in a negative light in a bad light so yeah they they actually enjoyed it I wasn't expecting but <laughs> yeah they were and well uh, considering that you filmed it with your phone and it was made during the quarantine so for home in home conditions let's say where would you like this film to be seen in cinema theaters or at home by people idea oh my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um i think it's nice to, nice to see it at home but i don't i haven't seen myself in a, in the cinema so i don't know how it looks on the cinema screen uh yeah it would be interesting for me to to see it i think it 
it is possible it is possible because again it's not like 4k but it's still it's i think also that the the visuals are interesting because if if i wasn't if i weren't to film with a phone i wouldn't um I wouldn't have been able to record like when they were fighting or yeah more kind of intimate moments because you can come with, with a camera and film because they would have known and uh, yeah so it has its magic let's say yeah, yeah. you you managed to be uh, quite close to a fly on the wall so that's good <laughs> yeah thank you super much uh, I would like to ask you, Andra, about your film, Immigrants, uh, Andra Salauru, uh, yeah. and um, I really, really enjoyed it, and it was a very simple approach, but with a very effective dialogue and acting. Uh, was it the initial plan? Did it get into this later on? Yeah, it was the initial plan. It turned uh, exactly how I wanted, but after one year of work okay. <laughs> and a lot of editing, <clears throat> the uh, short film actually started on a uh, on a faculty camp. I think I I I wrote the the script there, uh, and it was actually like a revelation because I didn't know I could I could write until then, and the feedback from the people in the camp was amazing. After that, I apply with the with the script at a, um, uh, at a contest, script contest, and I actually won some money to make it because I didn't want to make it a movie. I just said, okay, it's a good script, whatever. Let's let it die in a drawer. I don't care, and <laughs> and I did it, uh, and it was a, a beautiful and uh, horrible experience at the same time because I didn't know how to direct I didn't know how to tell the actors what to do but uh, we figure out at some point and yeah I think I was lucky because I, I, I did a pretty long casting and um, uh, with the help of my team I did get pretty two, uh, two good actors to play the, the roles that I wanted to play. That, that's also what I wanted to ask you, if you had multiple actors auditioning or how yeah, was of course. the process? <clears throat> yeah, I had like, I think three days of auditioning. Uh, we posted, I think on the internet that we are having a casting and also we were, uh, we were calling people to come to the casting. Mm -hmm. And I had, yeah, I, I don't remember the number, but I, I know I had a lot of uh, a lot of actors. Uh, I choose uh, like a, a small part from the script for them. And yeah. it was actually it was like a first reading. I didn't send the, the script to them uh, beforehand uh, on purpose just to see how they react when they when they read for the first time. And yeah. Um, Alina and Jolt were were the best people. They they understood the the approach immediately. I didn't have to explain it to them. Mm -hmm. That's why that's why I choose them. Yeah, super super nice. And what did you do with the film? Where was it screened, showed until now? Uh, well, uh, it was at uh, Transylvania International Film Festival from Cluj, and mm -hmm. there it won the local competition. And after that, it was screened at Torino Film Market. It was at uh, Anonymul. It was, it was in a Croatia, uh, Croatia, I think, at a film festival. Um, oh, and uh, at uh, Le, um, Les Film de Cannes at Bucharest, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was a projection there too. Super nice, yeah. Did you work on another film afterwards or what are you working on right now? Yeah, I work on my <laughs> bachelor's degree uh, movie, but um, I don't think it was that good. <laughs> I mean, I made some films after that, but honestly, I think that was the best one mm -hmm. uh, because uh, everybody loved the immigrants and it was actually a pretty good movie for like a first movie. And after that, I put a lot of pressure on me <laughs> and uh, and it wasn't that good but uh, now i'm like um 
I'm not, I, I don't want to say that I'm taking a break. I'm thinking about the feature film and I want to start writing it. But I also want to prepare for that. I mean, I don't want to rush it. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Yeah. And you are, did you finish studying at the university or where, where are you now? Because I know that you're writing on your doctorate. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yes. What is it about? Uh, it's about the um, portraitizations of women in uh, uh, in um, Romanian films. Mm -hmm. And contemporary. So, is it complicated to research on this topic or not? Do you have resources? Well, what's your um, what are your preliminary conclusions? Let's say for now. Uh, my preliminary conclusion is that <laughs> are that uh well first of all i need to do a lot of research i mean i've just started <laughs> mm -hmm. uh there's a lot to dig in and to watch a lot of movies um i don't know i i don't want to say it's black or white or it's like that uh or like that i just want to see uh if things could be improved or not Mm -hmm. I just want to see if there are uh, uh, there are things that could be uh, make better. Okay, yeah. Thank you super much. Thank you. Um, I would like to to ask uh, Claudia, the director of Helen, uh, a bit. Tell us, please, about your film. How did you how did you work on it, and how how did the production went? Yeah. Uh, well. My film was shot during the um, first half of, uh, no, first half of my last semester in Cluj. Mm -hmm. uh, while I was studying for my bachelor's degree, I uh, graduated in, with, in film studies in Cluj, even though I'm from Bucharest. And um, being that this is a more theoretical um, side of uh, the cinema department, and we were focusing more on critical analysis of films and stuff like that. I felt the need to uh, take some action into um, trying to make something because I always wanted to. That's why I kind of uh, <laughs> came to this school to make movies. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so um, I took it upon myself to apply to an optional course from the directing department just to challenge myself to make something. Mm -hmm. And um, what I found is that what I ended up with was uh, the image of someone trying to process the subject of her film, because despite being far away from home, yes, and I was studying here, and I was happy with with my studies, I uh, felt that at the time I felt very, um, I was not in a good state of mind. I felt quite isolated and lonely and very, and I couldn't really pinpoint where that, where that came from. So I made it the subject of my short film, trying to understand that. And what I had was that feeling and also this book uh, called Man's Search for Meaning, mm -hmm. from which, which kind of helped me get through that, that phase of my life. So I started wandering around Cluj and filming myself. And I was already doing that for a while beforehand because my short film is a mix of that, the fictional side, fictionalized part, which kind of took shape while I was doing it, mm -hmm. and some archival imagery from previous time in Cluj and also from my childhood. So that's kind of what I ended up with is a mix of reality and uh, fiction in trying to understand that and um, processing my feelings at the time. And it ended up, uh, it was more important. The, the process ended up being more important than the final, than getting to a resolution with mm -hmm. the movie mm -hmm. and uh, I ended up um, actually um, by going back and using that archive ar archival imagery kind of um, 
Well, it's funny because one of the working titles for my, my short film was Kinotherapy, but it felt too explicit, you know, but it kind of really helped work. It really worked in that, in that direction in that it provided me with um, a way to analyze what I was going through. And part of it was the memory of Helen, which is Elena in the Romanian, which is the aunt, the person that appears in my short film, uh, who passed away at a, at a very young age. And that I mentioned in the short film that I was kind of around this or about to be the same age as her uh, when that was shot. And so that kind of, uh, I got to some source of maybe my, my isolation, uh, the feeling of isolation and of detachment with the world and with finding a sense of meaning at that point in my life. And I think it's mostly about a girl who at that point couldn't even find compassion for herself. And so she turns to this medium, which is the perfect, I think for me, one that deals with empathy in, to a great extent. So, that was always I could always return to to cinema to heal some parts before but it wasn't didn't feel like enough mm -hmm. so I had to insert myself I guess into the mix and try to see where it leads me <laughs> that's pretty much it I, I know that for it uh, you work with Radu Jude he coordinated the, the film how, how was it to work together and what did he actually do I mean how was how were you working on it? Well, um, to be honest, and I think it shows in the in how the film looks like, and it's not. I kind of use what I what I had the same as Agatha, and um, so I did it mostly on my own. But what he he was uh, kind of the person, one of the people that also Andra spoke about that I needed or he was the one who appreciated first mm -hmm. and saw something in it some potential for something i i wasn't really thinking too much i was looking at it more as um, something to challenge myself with and kind of homework for this one course that i have to complete um, but he looked at it as uh, i don't know something I can't really <laughs> understand it myself, but his contribution came more afterwards in making me understand why what I did matters and should should be uh, screened, should be seen by other people. Yeah, for, for you, it was also quite close. So that, that's why I asked about him because sometimes it's good to, to reflect onto someone who sees it from outside. Yeah, and that was definitely needed. Mm. I because I couldn't see see those things myself or find an outside perspective which also could have been critical and just as important just as necessary mm -hmm. yeah what, what are your directing plans now do, do you plan to work on other films or are you already doing it yes I am mainly I've been working on the story for this uh, future film for about, I had a one year uh, break between now I'm studying master, at masters, uh, my master's in Cluj in, in a section called performing arts and film. But I had one year break between, between in the, and during that time I, I started working on this story that also stems from personal history, but mostly from it's again a fictionalized uh, story about um, that's rooted in reality and in real events, but it's mainly about pictures um, that kind of stuck with me uh, from from several mem memories with my family and in recent years, and it deals with uh, um, terminal illness and also it's it's about my perception again about processing the. Mm -hmm. those uh, those events that were in my um, in my family is recent history 
I kind of found that there's a mythology of illness uh, in my family and uh, some coincidences that I just can't explain. And so I started writing them down um, about my, my mother's side of the family. And, but uh, this time I, I wanna separate it a bit more, work with, mm -hmm. possibly work with actors and try to make it more, more fiction than reality. I should know where it, where it comes from, but. <laughs> Yeah, try to develop a sort of methodology of how to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's that's kind of what I. There are actually what I know for sure right now is that there are certain images that I need to see put on the screen, <laughs> and that those were my focus. And starting from there, the story just is built around them because those are kind of in my memory and I, I know that they should show up somewhere. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, I'm looking forward to, to watching it. Thank you super much. Thank you. Um, I would like to ask you, Sandra, about your film, Speranza. Uh, how did you start working on it and how was the, the process? Oh, hi. Um, first of all, I would like to say that uh, Speranza it was my aunt who raised me for almost 10 years and she didn't have a child so I was her child this is how she called me and we had a very special connection and uh, after she found out that she had cancer uh, we had she had somehow a difficult time and in our family, cancer is a very common disease. Her brother died from cancer, her father, her grandfather. Some, somehow, I wanted to explore the possibility that I could have at some point. Mm -hmm. And even if it was, it was a very hard question to ask for her, she gladly accepted from, and I was very, very surprised. And um, after I, every three weeks, she got treatment. So every time I was in hospital with her, visiting her, and uh, I started um, knowing her friends, her colleagues from the hospital, and I met such lovely persons and the ladies there were I don't know, they had a very special connection that also I wanted to, to observe in the film. And uh, I think these were the main reasons that I started this, this documentary. And yeah. observing how they interact. And I film, I think, I don't know, thousands of hours of phone conversations between them and it was very interesting to to see the things they shared very personal uh, experience that in thinking that they didn't know each other very well i mean they just met and started to to share those things and somehow i think uh i always said okay um I understand you, I'm with you, I support you, but I didn't. I realized after she died that I didn't understand her and uh, only the person that is sharing this illness, I mean, they had the person that had cancer there that really understood each other. So mm -hmm. it's... I think it's a complicated thing to understand anyways. And yes. It, and somehow you said, okay, I get it, but you don't. Yeah. And I realized that only after she passed away. Did you did you watch the film afterwards or did you watch it with your family? Uh, I finished the film when she was still living, mm -hmm. but I didn't have the courage to, to show her because at some point I show her, uh, a glimpse of that in the trailer 
and she was somehow surprised and she got upset and I was very, very afraid to, to show her the, the entire movie because I thought it will be very painful Mm -hmm. to, to see images of her when she uh, she was okay, the treatment got well, uh, was going well, mm -hmm. and at the point I finished it, she was already weak. Yeah. So I was afraid, and I think I think and I hope it it was the right decision, the right call at the moment. Well, I guess if it was what you. Felt. I guess it was the only good decision that you. Yeah, only only once she told me that it would like to see it, mm -hmm. and I was, I don't know, maybe, but it didn't happen after all. Yeah, I don't know. I think it will take some years that, until you will be able to watch it and see it. I don't know, as a document, let's say, and as a film, I I don't really know. I really liked it. I thought it was very. Yeah, very intimate and very well made. Yeah, it's very personal. And uh, I think since she died, I only saw it twice. Mm -hmm. But somehow I, I tried not to focus on that because um, it's very painful. Yeah. And brings a lot of memories. But on the other hand, I'm very glad that I did this documentary because I had perfect memory of her yeah the time we spent together was the best thing in my life so after all it was the right call yeah. and i'm very gra grateful for all the person that helped me in the university because i struggled a lot with the editing and my professor were oh okay you have to do it so we are here to support you and it was was the best thing could happen. Yeah, it's really good. Are, you know, did you work on something afterwards or are you are you in another project right now? Uh, no, this project was for my master degree. And after that, I got the job in other industry. Okay. So right now I'm not doing films anymore, mm -hmm. at least for the moment not. Yeah. Yeah, well, you never know, I guess, <laughs> when you're going to go back. <laughs> Thank you super much. Thank you. Um, now we pass to you, Hunor. Is, it, is that correct? Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, from all the films, your film was basically like a breath of fresh air. It was a completely different thing uh, about snowboarding. When did you shoot all that material? <laughs> I guess before the pandemic. Well, uh, after the first year of university, I already knew what I want to do for my uh, bachelor degree film. So I started uh, searching for a crew and um, I already had a plan to make a, a free ski and freestyle snowboard uh, uh, short documentary. So basically, uh, the whole material is, is close to one uh, terabyte. Mm -hmm. um, filmed uh, like three years, um, so it's based on a on an event in uh, Romania in in uh, Hargita Madras. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I was really, really lucky because the pandemic shut down the 2020 event. Um, so I um, so I had the uh, the best uh, material. So I could make my uh, my film, and uh, I had a really big pleasure to work with a wonderful team with uh, four uh, four friends, um, uh, <clears throat> because the idea came from my past uh, because I've been skiing professionally for fifteen years, and uh, really wanted to make a film about my passion. Mm -hmm. So. I had a chance. Uh, it's it's a really close event to my hometown. Uh, and I go. I got out there. Uh, I saw how many one of people are joining this event. I wanted to show this uh, this passion to the to the big world <laughs> because mm -hmm. 
for Romanian uh, athletes doesn't have the opportunity and money to go uh, go out and uh, um, be part of the European uh, events of freestyle ski and snowboard. But some of them are at the same level as the other athletes in mm -hmm. Europe. Yeah. Um, the only problem I had with uh, filming this movie uh, was with the lockdown because I planned to make the interviews in the 2020 event, uh, but the lockdown closed the event. So I had to choose <laughs> another direction. Uh, and the only way to make uh, the interviews was to make them online. Mm -hmm. So I called them the interviews, I make them all in Skype. Uh, that was the easiest way to to reach the athletes. Yeah, and was the film published online, or what? What did you do with it? After no, you... it 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 wasn't published. Uh, if I know correct, it was screened uh, this year, uh, or last year in 2020 in uh, uh, Hungarian days in Cluj Napoca. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is the first festival where the film is. Super nice. Because <laughs> I was asking about the, the online publishing because I think it can also be a nice tool for getting the community together because yeah, it, everyone is there and I guess you all miss going yeah, skiing or snowboarding. And uh, yeah, do you, do you plan to also make other films about this topic with these people? Uh, well, not uh, in this topic, but I remained in the sport uh, topic. Uh, I already planned and uh, I'm already filming uh, a new documentary, a short documentary about my friend who, who became a professional drift driver in Romania mm -hmm. um, and his story, how, how, how we started with no money and how we now became a, a pro driver. Very nice. And the film is also made for the university or did you finish studying? Uh, well, uh, it's not finished yet. So, so we plan to finish the filming in, uh, in June. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a plan to make uh, two movies, one, one for myself, uh, a short documentary and one, uh, and one uh, fiction type of uh, documentary uh, for the university. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you super much. And now okay. that we, we talked about all the films, uh, I'd like to ask you, how do you feel as directors in this uh, unsettling pandemic times? I mean, what, what are your perspectives? What do you want to do with your films? And yeah, how, how do you envision the future of your career? I think the, the best way, what I saw in, in this uh, pandemic, uh, to show the films. Yeah, I saw some of uh, the films were uh, projected in Vimo uh, with like a one dollar or two dollar bill to, mm -hmm. to pay uh, and I think it's a really cool opportunity to bring the friends over your house. Uh, you pay one time fee and uh, you can watch uh, uh, cool films and cool uh, um, movies together. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, the other directors, how do you feel about this? Do you think it's nice to have your films seen like this, or would you prefer to go to festivals the classic way, let's say? Well, um, I, I, I would say that the online screening is always well, welcomed. It's better than nothing. So, um, so I, I'm very happy about it. Um, I also had my film screened on, online, and I also was invited. To some festivals with obscure, but it, it uh, unfortunately it did not have have happen the the actual event. So um, that's why I am so happy with the, with all the online events that are have happening now in the film industry. Yeah, yeah. And um, a question for everyone: uh, What do you think that film festivals can or should do for filmmakers at the moment? I mean, still they move, should they move things online? Should they organize, I don't know, talks like this? Do you think they are helpful for, for you? How can, yeah, festivals support filmmakers right now? I think this hybrid 
uh, between the online and the classic projections. It's um, the best thing for the directors. And I would like after the, the pandemic is done to continue, continue doing this. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very nice opportunity for the directors to um, share things with the public because maybe in my position right now, I'm working, I have a eight hour job. So I couldn't go to another country to just for the projection. Mm -hmm. And I think these online events are very affordable for me. So from this perspective, I think even if the pandemic is gone, it's done, uh, it would be very, very nice to still have these, these meetings. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Uh, what do what do the others think? Or maybe you, Daniel, have an opinion on this? I don't know. Well, I'm, uh, I'm here with Sandra uh, because uh, uh, it's very interesting that we um, came to rethink everything we're doing now uh, and to see the possibilities we kind of ignored um, in the previous years. Um, so I'm watching what's happening with film distribution in Romania. Um, a couple of years ago, we weren't even thinking of online distribution. Uh, so, uh, also with uh, art teaching, we weren't thinking that we could teach some, some of the classes in an online format. Um, so, I think this hybrid uh, format is going to stay, and or parts of it are going to, to stay. And um, sometimes maybe you get frustrated that, I don't know, you did, uh, didn't get seats to the Q&A with the famous director. And uh, because you are not there at the, um, at the screening, and uh, um, maybe uh, you can we can start streaming this uh, this uh, discussions, these master classes. Um, uh, we can meet people we thought unreachable by now um, by this uh, by this platform. So uh, because um, in uh, in the past years, also in school, we were like having oh we will, I'd like to uh, to bring someone for a master class from Hungary. Uh, but it's quite uh, difficult to, with the accommodation, with the timetable, with uh, everything like this. And now things can happen more easily. On, uh, 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 and we, we started to think, okay, this, this is possible. And uh, uh, we should be more open to, to the online for format. But I, I have to say that, uh, of course, I enjoy more going to the cinema. And, uh, and see movies and uh, yeah, you know, sometimes the online format can get boring if it's the only option mm -hmm. and frustrating. Yeah, thank you. Then I guess we're gonna stay with this, with the idea that putting things online, uh, it makes them yeah accessible for more people from more places. And uh, this was it for me, these were my questions. I am super happy that I got to, to understand how, how you worked on, the, on your films and how you developed them. And uh, I wish you lots of great, amazing luck in the future and lots of power to, to continue working. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for the Film University to be here with us. And uh, this was it for now. The films are available on the platform of Beast until the 28th of March. So yeah, see you next. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.